Okay, so uh, next item on the agenda, Luke. Uh, forecast says you're about to have sun tomorrow. I'm going to need you to perform an experiment for me. You mean, you mean I get to leave the writer dungeon? Not only are you getting out of the writer's dungeon, I'm actually going to have to ship you a bunch of beer to drink as a part of this experiment. Luke, you okay? Uh, honestly, if you're not comfortable with that, that's totally fine. I'm sure one of the other researchers would be more than happy. No, 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 no. I could be convinced. Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, the show that not only ruins your childhoods, we also ruin a perfectly good beer. The difference though here is that we actually try to repair the damage we caused to the beer. Your childhoods, yeah, not so much. Friends, summer's winding down, and that means that it's suddenly your last chance to crack open a cold one on a deserted beach to pretend like you're in a Corona beer commercial. But for as idyllic as those commercials make it seem, what they conveniently fail to mention is that drinking on a sunny tropical beach is probably the single worst way to consume a beer. You see, when beer gets hit by light, the flavor starts to change. It suddenly becomes a musty, rubbery, wet cardboard kind of taste. This is scientifically known as beer with oxidation haze, or light-struck beer. Or, if we're being less formal about it, skunked beer. No, I'd say in general, beer drinkers tend to agree that it's best to keep the essence of burnt rubber out of your beverage. It's terrible! Nobody drink the beer! The beer has gone bad! Tastes like beer to me. Yeah, me too! <laughs> That's great. And if you're into that sort of thing, then go ahead and do the exact opposite of everything we're about to show you in today's episode. Because today, we're using science to unskunk your beer. That's right, today's episode is gonna make my 11th grade chemistry teacher, Mrs. Chandler, so proud because I'm using science to keep your summertime buzz going. Today, we're not just preventing your beer from tasting like cardboard, we're outright reversing it. We are literally bringing your food back from the dead like some sort of lame Dr. Frankenstein. So if you thought I was gonna pass up a chance to resurrect your half-dead Heineken, your past Pabst, and your bygone Budweiser, well, you've got another thing coming. We're here to keep your last days of summer from becoming a bummer, so pull out your titration sets and let's hops to it. Now, to reverse the process using science, we actually first have to just understand the process scientifically. So how exactly does light change the way a beer tastes? The molecule that's key in the process is called 3 methyl -but 2 ene one thiol but thankfully for all of us, it can also be shortened to 3-MBT. 3 MBT starts being detectable to human taste buds at about four parts per trillion. So it does not take a lot of this stuff to make your beer taste bad. Now, 3 MBT isn't in beer to begin with. It actually gets produced when light hits the beer and triggers a series of reactions. I'm not going to stand here and bore you with all the full mechanisms, though if you do want to pause it right now, you can absorb it all and knock yourself out and find a secret message. But for the TLDR version, sunlight triggers a reaction between molecules present in the beer, which creates half of the skunky molecule. That molecule then attaches to a detached part in the bitter hops molecule of the beer to create the full skunky molecule, 3-MBT. When their powers combine, they ruin beer. And already we're in the process of disproving one major myth about skunked beer. It is not dependent on heat. A persistent rumor exists that beer gets skunked as it gets warmer. But science tells us that unless you're boiling and freezing your beer, changes in temperature shouldn't be affecting the taste on a chemical level. Nope, this one is all about light. Now, beer that's left in the sun becomes warm, which is why there's a correlation between the two happening, and to be fair, heat does tend to speed up chemical reactions, but without light, the skunking shouldn't be happening in the first place. And to prove this, I let theorist team member Luke out of his writer's dungeon. I, I mean, a uh, fully furnished basement that definitely has windows and everything, and is totally not a prison where I keep people to r write re research scripts. And let me tell you, Luke was more than excited to carry out a series of what I like to call experiments. Experiments? Where, where it's beer, ex-beer, ex ex ex-beer immense. Please acknowledge how funny I am, thanks. The first test was to see just how fickle beer is when it comes to sunlight. Luke took three bottles of Corona, he placed one in direct sunlight, he placed another in shade, and he left one inside a cardboard box where no light could reach it at all. After leaving the beers out for ten minutes, he gave each one a blind taste test. The bottle that received no sunlight had no hint of skunkiness, whereas the shaded bottle had a little, and the direct sunlight bottle had a lot. Yeah, very different. I'm honestly pretty surprised that, like, just 10 minutes in the sun can change 
the taste this much. When you taste the Sun one back to back against the one that was in the box, it's just a striking difference. I also wanted to know what role temperature plays in skunking beer, if any. So I had Luke carry out a second experiment in his dungeon, in his basement, away from direct sunlight. He prepared three different beer baths, one cold, one room temperature, and one hot. He then bathed the bottles for 10 minutes and gave them a taste. Temperature aside, I can't tell a difference. They all have the exact same taste. The funny thing about this is Matt's making me do this right before our afternoon meeting. So um, I'm about to go into a Zoom meeting with several beers on an otherwise empty stomach. So should be fun. So Luke, how'd the uh, skunk beer experiment go? Yeah, it w- went well. Just had a tiny sip from every beer. Definitely didn't uh, drink all of them. Great, glad to hear it. So if you could just go and uh, text your ex. What? I said, if you could just go and send me your invoice. Oh, I yeah, 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 will do. In short, the takeaways from these initial tests were A, sunlight can change the taste of your beer in a big way, B, those changes can happen very quickly, C, temperature does not change the taste of beer on a chemical level, and D, you shouldn't text your ex while you're buzzed, you broke up for a good reason. So now, having confirmed that light is indeed the X factor here, let's focus on that. Cans of beer obviously are going to do the best job of blocking out light because they're opaque, but many people prefer to avoid them because of their metallic can flavor. For a purer taste, most people instead prefer to use glass bottles. Even then, not all bottles are going to be created equally. While it's true light causes the skunking process to happen, it's actually the blue and ultraviolet wavelengths of light that have been shown to skunk beer the fastest. These are short frequency waves, with a length between 350 and 500 nanometers, which means that the color of your beer bottle is actually going to make a significant difference in the skunkiness of your beer. Round glass should be very effective at blocking out blue light, as it blocks pretty much all light below 500 nanometers. Green glass glass should be slightly less effective at blocking out blue light because it only blocks light around 400 nanometers in length and less. And a clear glass is obviously the worst, and it'll do about just as much work protecting your beer as my partner Dustin did for our 7th grade earth science projects. Yes, I still remember Dustin. You're welcome. Now we wanted to show how exactly bottle color affects skunking in the real world, so we set three unopened bottles of Corona underneath three different colored glass vases. One clear, one green, and one brown. We also left a bottle inside the box is our control. After 10 minutes in the sun, Luke subjected himself to a blind taste test to see if he could tell the difference. I only know the identity of the beer that was in the box, our control beer. The other three that were under the colored vases have been mixed up by camera woman Kelly here, so I'm going into this blind. So uh, here we go, box beer versus, uh, let's call it vase A. Okay, yeah, these, these are very similar. Um, I'm going to say a taste difference of maybe one. Uh, Yeah, very different. I'm going to give this one a taste difference of four or so, four out of ten. Yeah, this one's one's very different also. I'm going to say it's a little more, a little more different uh, than vase B was. Was this the clear one? Yeah, that's the clear. Okay. So the experiment played out exactly the way that the science would say it would, except there was one little twist. Okay, so the weird thing is I've done two different taste tests of light struck Corona at this point, and both times I actually preferred the most skunked Coronas, uh, the ones under clear glass, the ones in full sunlight, and that goes for without lime and with. I mean, it could just be a me thing, but for what it's worth, camera woman Kelly had the same thoughts when She did the taste test, so I don't know, there could be something to it. Honestly, this was a bit unexpected. We needed to know if this result extended to other types of beer as well. So Luke ran to the store to grab some Modelo Especial, a pilsner from Mexico that also comes in a glass bottle. He also picked up some of the clear bottled American lager, Miller High Life. We ran the experiment again, and it confirmed a lot of what we saw in the previous experiment. Takes me back to college when I was uh, an RA watching the other kids drink Miller High Life. The brown glass really keeps the flavor closer to the control. The difference here with the uh, Modelo Especial is that the skunkiness does not improve the taste. The Modelo that was under the brown glass is by far my favorite. The Modelo that was under the clear glass, um, I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, Uh, same thing here with the High Life. Skunkiness 
is not a good thing here like it is with the corona. So in the end, we were able to confirm what we had suspected all along, that skunked beer is generally a bad thing. But the corona results did bring up an interesting point. To certain palates and certain beers, a bit of skunkiness can actually be a good thing. Which kind of made me wonder, is corona playing 4D chess here? On one hand, I wanted to drag them through the mud because their marketing strategy is all about drinking beer in the worst vessel and in the worst location for beer skunking. But maybe, just maybe they've designed the beer's flavor to be complemented by some skunkiness. I mean, the term corona refers to the outermost ring of plasma on the sun, which gives it a ring-like crown, so it sure feels like they're invoking the sun in a super deliberate way. Maybe they're also invoking it in the matter of their recipe. You win this round, corona, but I've got my eyes on you. Still, the fact remains that not every beer is gonna be improved by skunk. Some of your favorite summertime beverages come in packages that are downright awful for summertime enjoyment. So what's a thirsty theorist to do? He turns to science. And thanks to the Master Brewers podcast, we had heard about a way to potentially unskunk light-struck beer. You see, copper is an element that's been used in the wine bottling process for many years to help reduce hydrogen sulfides that arise because, well, it makes the wine smell like rotten eggs. Seria Brewing Company's Catherine Vila, a recent guest on the Master Brewers podcast, reasoned that since 3-MBT is a sulfur-based molecule, copper might be helpful in neutralizing the 3-MBT in beer, just like it's helpful in neutralizing the sulfides in wine. So the folks at Seria gave it a try, and they claim it actually reduced the skunkiness of light-struck beer, which, if true, is probably the coolest way to apply chemistry that I've personally encountered post-graduation. Come to think of it, applying chemistry didn't exactly make me the big man on campus pre-graduation either. So I had Luke emerge from his dungeon one final time to verify whether it actually worked. Now, Seria Brewing Company used copper gluconate, a dietary supplement that's safe for human consumption to render the 3-MBT tasteless. How much copper gluconate did they use? Well, they kept that info close to the vest on the podcast, but we decided to go ahead and try to figure it out for ourselves. We bribed the chair of the chemistry department at a local university and gained access to a laboratory where we performed a titration on their state-of-the-art equipment. Now, in, in reality, we grabbed an $8 bottle of copper gluconate supplements from GNC and did some trial and error. See, adding copper gluconate to beer was kind of a double-edged sword. More of it meant less skunky beer, but also a more metallic flavor. And hey, if we wanted our beer to taste like metal and not be skunky, well, we should have just been using cans in the first place. Eventually, we landed on one-eighth of a milligram per ounce of beer, or 1.5 milligrams of copper gluconate per bottle, as being just the right amount. Stop back perfectly to its original unskunked flavor, but it's a whole lot less skunky than it originally was. And even with that copper in there, it's less metallic tasting than Corona in a can. And with that conclusion, friends, we achieved exactly what we set out to do. We eliminated the skunky taste from light struck beer using science. Huzzah! For once, a theory channel has completely repaired the damage that it caused. Well, almost completely anyway. Even if you have copper gluconate handy, your best bet for a skunk free summertime brewski is still just a avoid getting it skunked in the first place. That means drinking from a brown bottle in the shade if possible, or if you've achieved your final dad form and no longer care about looking cool, you just pick up one of those zippered bottle koozies that completely block out the sun's rays. So take note, all you beer brands out there, if you ever decide to chase the tragically uncool scientist market, your ad should look a little something like this. Except you, Corona, don't you change a thing. But hey, that's just a beery. A food beery. Cheers. Theorists, as always, thanks for watching and thank you for subscribing to the channel. We just crossed the 3 million mark last month and we are now setting our sights on 4 million. We don't do too many alcohol related episodes here on Food Theory, but since you watched all the way through to the end of this one, I can see that you have taste. That's why I'm serving you up a sophisticated suggestion, our episode on wine glass shape. They may tell you that shape doesn't matter, but it does. It really does. So go ahead, check that one out. Don't text your exes and I'll see you all next week.